Welcome you all. This is the church's 40th birthday. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'd like those who 
have been here for at least over 30 years to just put your hand in the air. Amazing. We didn't manage to kill them all off. <laughs> this morning we, we're going to start off with worship. And um, I was going to say you can swing on the chandeliers, but they're a little bit high. Um, whatever you want to do, you can sit, stand, lie on the floor, go outside, have a smoke, whatever. Okay? Um, <laughs> if you go outside, I'll get you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Let's pray together. Father God, you are a most amazing God. And just by the beauty of what we see in front of us today, we know that you are a beautiful, creative, wonderful Father. You brought us into existence 40 years ago. You've kept us going, and you're going to take this church on for many, many years into the future, and we want to praise you for that. And so as we worship today, Lord, we want to say thank you to you for sustaining us, protecting us, leading us, guiding us, supporting us, providing for us. Every single thing we needed, you have brought our way. We bless you for that. And all the happenings that take place today, you've brought our way as well. And so we're so grateful. And so to you, Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, we ascribe glory this morning. We want to honor your name. We want to bless you today. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to come. Come and anoint our worship. Anoint our time together with your amazing presence. And we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning, children of God. Isn't this a beautiful day? Yeah. A historic day. You know, 40 years ago. <laughs> Let me finish the sentence. 40 years ago. God spoke a word to our senior pastor, Pastor Allen. And Pastor Allen obeyed. This wasn't here 40 years ago. But because God spoke, we know that God is a faithful God. Amen? All God's promises are yes, yes and amen. And this is proof of this. So today, I'd like to invite everybody to take the time to worship the King of Kings to worship the one who has been faithful for 40 years. So forget about how you dressed. Forget about who's next to you. We're going to praise God today, okay? So get off your seats and just wave to someone across.
praise cause I know I praise cause I know you're still in control my praise is a weapon it's more than a sound cause praise is the shout my praise is the shout that brings Jericho down and as long as I'm breathing as long as I'm breathing Oh, 
There's no one like Jesus, amen? Wow. We looked, but we found no one like Jesus. And to that we say, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great. And always sing how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And no one sing how great, how great is our God. He is. He is the name above all names. You are worthy.
sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God, to How great Thou art, how great Thou
never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you working. Even when I don't feel it, you working, God. thank you that you're a good God. We thank you that you're a provider, our redeemer, our healer, God. And that is who you are. And you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all.
to you are all things. You deserve the glory. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. For from you are all things. To you are all things, Lord. You deserve the glory. For from you, for from you are all things. But to you are all things. You deserve the glory. And I. say you are the Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. Because you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be
start off with praise and we end with praise. Because you are worthy to be praised, Father. It's all about you, Jesus, at the end of the day. And we just say thank you for your faithfulness. Amen. So I hope you're not tired. We still have another hour's worship. <laughs> not quite. So, everybody, we're going to play one more song. One more song. Just one more song. But this song is special because we're going to be doing our last offering collection. The last one. So, if you have your cards, your wallets, <laughs> get ready. <laughs> we can also take payment from your phone if you... So because logistics-wise, there are two boxes in the center of the church on the offering boxes, right in the center. So everybody at the back, will you please put your offerings in those boxes? And everybody in the front, there are two boxes on each side of the stage, on the left and the right. Please put your offerings in there. And if you take your time, we can play the song longer. Huh? <laughs> so as we play the song, do what you have to do. Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for He cares for you. Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for He cares. Cast your burdens. Cast your burdens unto Jesus. For he cares for you, cast your burdens unto Jesus. For he cares, sing Jesus high. To Jesus. one forgot to do was to um, ask you to hand your purse over to somebody else so that they could put your offering in. Um, <laughs> lost opportunity, Ron. Hey. Please give your wallets to <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to just welcome our special guests today. They're all going to uh, come and share a little bit in a few moments. So I'm going to Start with Dave and Colleen over there, if they will stand, just so you can see who they are. 
Dave is the national leader of Vineyard at the moment in South Africa. Thank you. And then there's Colin. Uh, Colin. What is wrong with your brain? Costa and Lorraine. <laughs> Will you stand, please? Uh, uh, <laughs> they were the um, previous national directors of Vineyard in South Africa. You know, I mix with the top, top brass, eh? And then one of my very, very best old friends. I mean, he's old, he's 85, still alive, going out on mission and all that kind of stuff. John Fisher, please stand. <laughs> It's great to have you guys with us. It's great that we've made a 40th birthday, because some of us have got sort of long in the tooth. Um, and so we're glad you're here to celebrate with us in the birthday celebration, and then also in the handing over to the successor. And may God be merciful on him. and give him much grace. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask that um, Dave and Colleen kick off with what they wanna say, then Costa and Lorraine, and then John, and then Fifi, one of our elders is gonna come and give her five cents. Maybe she's gonna appraise each one's talk, I don't know. Um, and then after that, we'll uh, get into some other stuff. All right. Thanks, Alan. This man is absolutely heroic, eh? Let's give Alan a hand, eh? Thank you, Alan. Appreciate you guys so much. It's great to be with you. And uh, Alan and Shaw, this is an awesome moment. We are so glad, glad we could be here to celebrate with you. And the nation celebrates with you. The Vineyard Nation celebrates with you today, eh? We are... Uh, you know, God, God made us all unique. There's no one quite like you. Ellen in particular, and, and sure, can I just say to you guys, there's, you're one of a kind. When God made you, he threw out the mold and said, I'll never do that again. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so let's be encouraged. Uh, I think the thing that I wanted to just say, what Ellen brought to Centurion, Ellen and Shaw brought to Centurion, and what Andrew and Mandy are bringing to Centurion is what Jesus brought to Jericho. He walked down the streets of Jericho in a time of revival. Things were happening. And he looks up and he sees a rejected man in a tree. And he calls him by the name that he was given. But a name that didn't really fit because it's uh, Zacchaeus. It's a name in, it means he, in Hebrew it means the, the righteous one. The one who's got it together. The perfect guy. But he lived like a skabanga or a tzotzi. And uh, Jesus uh, calls him by that name. And Jesus brought three things into our experience through that encounter. The first was he challenged his identity. And we, we find that this is what's been happening in Centurion. People's identity has been adjusted. The gospel has come and given us a new way of, of realizing we are new in Christ. Then Jesus invites himself into Zacchaeus' house and, uh, and begins a community with him. And a community of un uh, unconditional love and acceptance. And we've seen that happen here at Centurion. And but just look around. I mean... We all, we, I look around, I feel like I'm in the midst of what I call licorice all sorts, eh? <laughs> what a wonderful thing. This is a kingdom feast, eh? Absolutely wonderful to celebrate the diversity of the kingdom. And Zacchaeus finds such healing, such restoration in the, the, the inbreak of the gospel for community in, in that home. And something happened. Uh, because, you know, when we belong, it's the beginning of healing from everything that's broken. The loving... A loving acceptance of community is the most restorative experience of our lives. It'll break every addiction. It sets us on the path of safety, and it helps us to know the God is, who is love. So he, he, the gospel he carried, the, and what Alan and Shaw and what Andrew and Mandy are bringing to Centurion, what Jesus brought to Jericho was a, a message of you can be a new person, and you can belong, and that belonging will be restorative. It was so restorative in Zacchaeus' time as we've seen it amongst many of your lives as well, that he just stood up and said, I've had enough of what I was. This is a day of new beginnings. And he gave away half his goods. And he, and he took on a biblical man, mantle of, of restoring what was stolen, what was lost. 
And at that point, as James says, we see that we are saved not by, by faith alone, but by works. When the works became evident, and we've seen the works in the lives of many of you here in, in Centurion, uh, Jesus said, now I know salvation has come to this house. Salvation has come. This man also is a son of Abraham. And I want to say to you in Centurion today, what a blessing it is to have you guys coming and, and taking up the, the part from the, the, the transition, the handing over of the baton for the gospel. This is a gospel-led church, and that's what you stand for. Never let's forget that. Let's hold on to that, that we're called. And Alan and, and Shaw, you have given us a solid foundation of commitment to the gospel. So we appreciate you so much. And on behalf of Vineyard South Africa, we say thank you. God bless you guys. Greetings, Centurion Vineyard, and the vineyard of, I guess, uh, Northern Gauteng, Gauteng North, something like that, eh? Um, yeah, well, on behalf of Lorraine and I, I want to say a few things. Um, I don't speak for a movement in any capacity any longer, but I do speak on behalf of a long-standing relationship with um, Alan and Charles and with some of the other old geezers that are getting on this platform today, who became this kind of newfound cave of a Dullam where we all went and hid. You know, it says about David that he gathered to him in the cave of Adullam, all those that were disenfranchised, in debt, in trouble with the law, you know, the rebels and the, and the, the O's who wanted a different deal. And, uh, and that was us back in the 80s. <clears throat> so we want to, <laughs> we want to honor uh, all of you. We want to honor a number of things today by your kind invitation and lay hands on this moment. Uh, in that capacity. Um, first of all, a church. These are the things we're laying hands on. These are the things we're honoring today, a church. Forty years. And as David, Dave said earlier, um, 40 years of putting up with Alan. <laughs> but 40 years in which the heart that is in Alan and Shaul has impacted your lives and given you the same things that they are and bring. Faith, faithfulness, a heart of worship, a, uh, a capacity to endure through uh, all the hard things of life. Integrity. The, the thing about Ellen and I, I mean, I'll give you a little secret. We didn't always see eye to eye. He said most of the time. How rude. <laughs> we didn't always see eye to eye, but I always knew where I stood with Alan. I always knew that the things he was saying, he was saying because he believed them, and guess what? I needed to hear them. We, as his fellow leaders, needed to hear them. So thank you, Alan and Charles, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your integrity. Thank you for being what we call WYSIWYG people. We all strive to be WYSIWYGs. You know what a WYSIWYG is? The, the letters stand for what you see is what you get. No, no masks, no nonsense, integrity and good character. Uh, we're also today honoring a dream that has been fulfilled because uh, Alan may not remember this, because his long-term memory is also going. Um, but about 40-some years ago, I met him. And that was in East London. That was in the days of the, the early part of the charismatic renewal, when he was also a rebel at the time. He was looking for his cave of Adullam. And it was only a number of years later that he found it in this vineyard. Um, but the dream was for those things that I mentioned. Uh, a priority for worship, 
a, a love for God that drives everything else that we do. And at the same time, mercy and mission. Lastly, I want to honor two couples today. We're laying hands on two couples. One on their way out of the door and the other on their way into the door, into this dream, into this uh, hope fulfilled, into this wonderful family uh, that is Centurion Vineyard. And by the way, when I say couples, please forgive me if in some of the rest of the things I say, I only mention the guys. Uh, I found that I'm in good company in the Bible. They usually only mention the guys. The wives sometimes get a P.S. <laughs> P.S. So and so, Moses was married to. Uh, but they are the people that have made the, the mission of their men possible. I speak for myself. I couldn't have done it without the wife that God gave me. These women are, 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 are um, uh, in ministry and in mission with their whole lives. They're not just preaching. They are in mission with their whole lives. And it is that life, that character, that endurance, that perseverance, that helping men to maintain humility <laughs> and maintain a sense of humor through the, every, everything that we go through. I know that this is definitely true of Charles and, and Mandy. Uh, and um, they are the people that took the edge off and made it possible for guys to survive 40 years, 40, 45, 50 years. Alan, as I said, was a rebel. He was, maybe let me say it more kindly, he was a nonconformist, always has been. I told him on Friday, I said when we were praying for them, them on Friday, I said no more fighting. <laughs> but I lied actually. The Lord woke me in the night and said, tell Alan there's one more. And, and what came to my mind, and I want to finish with this, what came to my mind was Caleb uh, at the end of the long journey in the wilderness. And you know the story. He was 40. By the way, he and Joshua were the only two of the spies that survived. I think you all know the story. And why did they survive? Because it says this, the Lord said, because he serves me wholeheartedly. He is wholeheartedly after me. And so uh, they came. And, and there was about a 20-year difference in age between them. So it's quite appropriate over here. Maybe it's not quite 20, but it's... Is it a bit more? Really? So you're younger than you look. Uh, okay. So, so here is Caleb. They cross the Jordan. They're into the promised land. There's some stuff, fights that have to be fought. And then there comes this day when Caleb calls over his pal Joshua and he says, Hey, Josh, remember, I was 45 years old when, the, when we went into that promised land and my feet stood on the ground of a little town called Hebron. And he said, and the Lord promised that land to me. And now I'm 85. And I've still got the fight in me to take the land that God promised. You see, this is the thing. A lot of people say retirement is not in the Bible. But actually, retirement is implied in words like inheritance. So I want to say to you guys, you are stepping into your inheritance. But don't rejoice too quickly because it says, Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard that the Anakites were there. You know what the Anakites are? The Anakites are the old man. Clint Eastwood has a famous, very biblical saying. He says, don't let the old man in. That's how he survived till 97 or whatever he is. And still full of cheek and full of energy and full of work. And so he said, uh, their cities are large and fortified, but the Lord helping me, I will drive them out. 
So you're going to a place where old men, or well, the old man might seek to intrude. Don't let him in. Drive him out. And then it says, Joshua blessed Caleb and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. And so Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and the Kenizzite, the, the Kenizzite ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel. And it goes on to say, then the land had rest from war. So after you fought that fight, then you can rest. Andrew and Mandy, the last thing I want to say. Uh, Andrew was saying last Sunday about the men, uh, leaders in his life who he thinks of as their fathers. And uh, you do have many fathers. Many fathers in the faith and in the movement and in the ministry. But our Greek DNA as well as the fact that I saw you first actually gives me primacy in regard to that list of fathers. And so I say to you, <laughs> I say to you, well done on the way that you have lived out that DNA. And I'm talking about the spiritual DNA as well as the Greek one. We, we lay hands today on a son indeed and a daughter a person who said afterwards uh, last Sunday I'm your biggest cheerleader and she has been she's a cheerleader she's a cheer and she's your cheerleader but much more than that and so when we lay hands on you as son and daughter as a as the new leader of this wonderful dream come true this dream that is centurion vineyard we lay hands on the connection between those who first had the dream in that cave of adullam we lay hands on the the dream itself we lay hands on the church we lay hands on the ministry and from the ministry to the next season of ministry and the mission and we say, we have every confidence that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. So we honor you. We honor both of you couples. We honor who you are um, in, with all of the energy that the Lord puts in us. We want to bless it. And we want to say, the future is so bright, you better wear shades. This is a very special day for me. Um, it's the 40th birthday here, but the 5th of November is my 64th born again birthday. So. And Ethel's, but she's not here. Yeah. Um, why do they make this thing for short people? I didn't know whether to say nice things about Alan first or blow his cover first. But um, you talked about the 80s. We, uh, Alan and I go back to 1969 when we both arrived at the Anglican Seminary. I won't say the other word. Um, we arrived at the Anglican Seminary and, uh, and he started causing the trouble. Uh, yeah, the stories. I mean, where, where's, where's, uh, Tony, where are you? Oh, oh, okay, I see you. Tony came a year later, but uh, the trouble had started already. I want you to understand something about this guy. Uh, you can be his friend, and he'll still get you. I, I remember uh, my, my study had a doorway with a bookshelf built into it. 
And I can remember one time walking in and uh, the bookshelf and the books were gone. And I thought, how did that happen? And I looked to see if they'd taken the nails out of the door on the other side. And, uh, and for a month I had no books. And I looked everywhere. And one morning I came down to breakfast in the common room, in, in, the, in the dining room, and there was my bookshelf standing with all my books in it. And he and somebody else, I don't know who, had taken that bookshelf as it was on its back, carried it out the window on the first floor, across the roof and into another room that was never used and locked it away. And I was his friend. <laughs> That's not the worst of it. We, we, we had, I was in the old part of the college and we had those switches. You know those brass switches that's got a little thingy that you tick down? All right. Now, he worked out a, a scheme, and I opened my door one day, and as I opened my door, there was an explosion. <laughs> and Alan had put a bag, a, pla a, 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 a brown paper packet with two big bangs in it, wired into the light socket, with gut going down, all the way down and up into the switch that when I opened my door, it was just this bang and paper burning everywhere. And uh, Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, that's, I, I won't, I, there's lots. <laughs> there's lots. I, 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 I was riding motorbike those days and I looked for my crash helmet one time and I couldn't find it. And, and eventually somebody said to me, why is your crash helmet on top of the spe steeple on top of the chapel? And I looked, and, and my crash helmet was right on the top of the steeple up there. And so I thought, well, blow them. And I went and got a long ladder. I was the, I was the estate manager. I went and got a long ladder, put it up, climbed up there, got up, and I was standing on the edge of the little roof thing, got my crash helmet down, and he'd taken the ladder away. <laughs> and I was his friend. Okay, enough of that. Let, let, me, let me say some things about Alan. I've known Alan. Alan's been my close friend since 1969. Charles came in 1970. And, and Ethel and I have, we've, we've known them as our friends for all that time. That's a long time. And we've never had a fight, as far as I can remember. But this, this guy, Alan, I keep telling people, don't underestimate him because he puts on this exterior of being a bit of a buffoon. But underneath that, there's an insatiable hunger for knowledge. He reads far more than you would imagine. He's after books. He's, 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 he, he can talk about stuff. He's not got a degree or anything like that, but he's, he's never stopped sucking up knowledge. The other thing about Alan is that he's loyal. Um, when I left the Anglican Church, he was still in the Anglican Church, but it didn't affect our friendship. And we've, we've stayed pretty close to each other all those years, and I know he's loyal. The, the thing about Alan that you need to hear is that this man is absolutely, totally generous. There, there are guys in ministry all over this country who have benefited from Alan's generosity in giving away material, giving away c CDs, DVDs, all sorts of things, giving people uh, access to... to a material on his PC, he is totally generous. He's unconventional. I mean, Costa was right when, with what he said. He belongs in the cave of Adullam. <laughs> he, 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 what they should give him here on leaving is a Kali flat paddle. Now, that's one of those life raft paddles. It's a big thing like this. Because he has made it uh, an art out of stirring.
unconventional. I arrived at his house um, when he was still at uh, Littleton uh, Anglican Church, and suddenly he was into CB radios. His, 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 uh, his nickname, or whatever they call it on the, I've never done this stuff, he, his handle on the, on the CB radios was shepherd, sheepdog, sheepdog, he was sheepdog. The next thing when I came, I came to visit him, he was into guns and making his own ammunition and, and, uh, and sh uh, shooting on the range. And he told the story, when did you tell that story? Friday? Friday. Yeah. Uh, it's worth hearing because he thought he was pretty good at sharp shooting. And he, he was, uh, and so he thought, well, Charles needs to learn how to uh, um, use a gun. So he, he took Shaul down to the range and he gave her the gun, loaded up, and he said, now you see that round thing there with a little dot in the middle? That's what you've got to hit. And he said, Shaul took the position, took the gun and went boof, 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 and put all the bullets in the, in the, into the, 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 the f center of the, of, of the target. And then, and then she, she took the gun and, and the smoke was still coming out of it and she said, Never try and go out with another woman. <laughs> yeah. Charles a saint, you know. <laughs> he never stops abusing her. That sounds terrible, I know. But he says, woman, if you want to live, keep quiet. He talks to her like that. But the love between them has lasted through a whole lot of stuff. And I'm not saying what I'm saying. He, he's got this way about him. Um, you see that building over there? I was here when they were building it. I was here before there was anything here. Just the, 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 what's the offices now where they live. And that, that building was going up. And there was a lady there who had fairly cruz hair, you know. And he said to her, hey. Don't you come and make trouble here. You see that Velcro up there? <laughs> It'll stick you up in the rafters. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I. Who? Jesse, where, where's Jesse? There, right. You nearly ended up in the rafters hanging there permanently, huh? And you know, uh, when, I, when I think back, all those years, my, my wife was gone, um, and, and uh, Shaul have been absolute saints putting up with the two of us. We, we've, we've given them a hard time. And in fact, God spoke to me one day, he needs to talk to you about that too. Uh, God spoke to me one day and he said, because I was complaining about her, you know, this woman, and God said to me, shut up. This woman has put up with your rubbish. She's followed you around the country. She's born your children. Now shut up and go and apologize. Now there's a, there's a sense in which we've, we've, we're not easy to live with. Well, let's put it that way, right? We're not easy to live with. And so, so I, I think there, there's a, there, if all I, I want, I'm trying to say is there are two sides to Alan. There's an extremely caring, extremely serious, extremely devoted side to Alan. And then there's a naughty boy. And, and what Costa said about the old man, don't let the old man in, will never let the child inside die. Yeah. Huh? Never let the child inside die. And I salute the two of you for a lifetime of devotion to the people of this church but before them, to the people of the church in Littleton and the church in uh, Nelspruit, was Nelspruit White River? Nelspruit, in Nelspruit, because Alan is a people person, and and I just want to salute them for what they've done here through God's help and God's faithfulness, because I've watched this thing grow 
from the lounge in the house. That's all it was in the beginning. Just meeting in the lounge in the house. Well, it started in your lounge in your other house. And out of that has come a mighty work of God through God's grace and God's faithfulness. And I salute them for being the instruments that God has used. And, and uh, Andrew, I just want to say I feel sorry for you, bro. You, you know, he, he's going to be here. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to have to put up with him. Can you imagine that? Yeah. So, so, Mandy, Charles will give, give you a lot of help. All right. so, so that's my, I don't pay tribute to the two of them. And, and just say that I, from what I know of Andrew and Mandy, you're getting a good replacement in that sense. Amen. Amen. Who does this now? Professor. You blew it. You're going to pay. You got it. I deliberately did not ask for the briefing about what do you want me to say because I was scared I might be just relegated to just thank the speakers. <laughs> But because we have a message, we, don't we have a message for them? We have a message for them. And, and um, my heart is, is pumping because normally I'm given three minutes. <laughs> but, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. But the message must come through. Yay! I've got 10 minutes. Okay. So thank you. Greetings to our honorable guests, uh, our senior leadership from Vineyard and your families, Dave, um, Costa, John. It's been beautiful to see you over the years supporting us and your presence here today. It's really welcomed. Thank you very much. To our local senior leadership, yeah, they know themselves. <laughs> thank you so much for the work that you've done and your families, and thank you for you to be here today. And church, Thank you so much for being here, first of all. Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you for bringing your friends and your families to honor this particular day. Isn't it a banquet? Isn't it a banquet? Awesome and glorious. And most of all is that we invited heaven to come. Look around. <laughs> Heaven is here. So greetings, Holy Spirit. Thank you for coming and honoring our prayers, our collective prayers. We love you. We are delighted of your presence. So I will thank the speakers if you wanted me to do that. I heard a hint. <laughs> but I have a word of encouragement that I've been sent to say. It's built from the input of the elders, the cell groups, the ladies' ministry, and we all share this sentiment. And it is divided, I'm trying to be calm. It is divided uh, in three parts. The first message is to ourselves as a church. Happy 40th birthday. Wow. You truly know how to celebrate in a banquet style. Over the 40 years, through the leadership of Pastor Alan and Shaw Watt, we have learned the powerful works of Jesus through the cross and his resurrection. The truth about Jesus, that he saved us, he healed us, he has set us free, and today we are co-workers in building his kingdom, an everlasting kingdom that knows no military coups that shall not be shaken, no corruption. It is so solid. And this is a done deal. That's done for us. And we have been taught this. 
but there is something that is not yet done. There's a deal that's still to be sealed. The possibility of experiencing a better version of ourselves. Hearing what has not been heard. Seeing what has not been seen. This is the goal in front of us. So Andrew and Mindy, this is the goal. We are aspiring for this. And we know that you will be joining us in this. You're not joining people who will be sitting and waiting for you to perform, right? We are here behind you. Thank you, thank you. So, the implication of this, this promise that comes with the understanding of God's word and what Jesus has done for us at the cross is that the church is not enter entering a retirement phase. It's actually entering its prime phase. And the goodness of this is that it's doing this with all the retirees, isn't it? <laughs> all the children, all the matured, all the ages. It's time to forge forward like never fo before. The promised land is in sight, but there are many battles to be won ahead. We need to get ready. And when we start to see God's hand answering our prayers, we must not forget him like what he has done for this banquet. I think the local people, guests, they would know that we started the preparation of this banquet with one third of the funds that are needed to have this. And we prayed for more, and we asked, and we prayed, and we prayed even for the weather. Isn't the weather beautiful? So when we start to see God's hand working and the answers coming forward, let's remember what Moses said in Deuteronomy 8, verse 12. I will read this. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your heads and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you, all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. And I want us to hold on in what he's saying in verse 18, further down. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms this, his covenant, which he saw to your ancestors as it is today. We're going to see God responding to our prayers like never before as we run into this new phase. And when we see that, let's remember to always give praise to him. The word of encouragement, encouragement to our outgoing leaders. Pastors Allen and Shaw, how does one capture and portray 40 years plus long excellent service in 10 minutes. I thought it might be better to walk you through to just give you a sense of whom we have become as your children, as your brothers and sisters in Christ under your leadership. And I trust that sometimes they say you see the works of the parents by what the children do. So I trust that this description will reflect the impact of the works that you've done over our lives through Christ who have strengthened you. First of all, we are not grass eaters, but we eat the steak, the real thing. <laughs> we do not accept to be pushed down when prayed for. In such cases, we pity the pusher as we may readily respond with an equal force of a clap. We only go down one way, through the Holy Spirit. We are diverse as reflected by the deco <laughs> that you've seen the color scheme today, the black and the white and the yellow. But we are becoming one. Sometimes back to diverse, but we're a work in progress, Mandy and Andrew. And we know that by God's grace, the oneness will come through. We are becoming prayer warriors and learning to wait to hear from God in praise 
and worship for the real deal. We ask for provisioning and we waited in praise and worship and we exercise the faith that we have been taught to have in Jesus. Look at what we have today. Through the cell groups, teachings, the sermons, and the leadership courses that you have offered us, we've learned the truth. Thank you. We are losing pride associated with self-exaltation. Actually, we feel lost when the spotlight is on our face because anonymous service and offering has become our surname. Ah, you missed it. You have taught us not to be proud. In simple words. But praise God. We love visitors. Love is the clue of this, of this church. We respect the house of the Lord. It is this house of worship that has been built out of your sweat and tears. We have witnessed its construction phase by phase. And your faith demonstrated when we blessed the opening of the second phase of this auditorium. It was meant for this day. I don't know where we would have... <laughs> all these people that we have today, where would they be housed? So, the rule, no food, no drink in this auditorium. <laughs> Except for today. <laughs> shall continue. <laughs> and I thought I'll take you memory lane. We were still in that old auditorium. One of the sermons, you said, you guys, you must build this church from the ceiling up. I want to say today, amen, we do. We're standing on the shoulders of mighty giants that have laid the foundations and have built even the walls. And we promise you, take that aside. We shall not forget this challenge. And better more, thank you, sis. And better more, uh, you shall see evidence of this fruition in the days of your living. So, the deal we are selling today is, is, is held in Psalm 61. Um, allow me to read it. Okay, that helped me to cool down. <laughs> Just deliver it. <laughs> Hear my cry, O oh God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the fool. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear the, your name. Increase the days of the king's life, his years for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Then I will ever sing in praise of your name. 
and fulfill my vows day after day. So there is a special inheritance for those who have reverence for the Lord, and this is you, um, Shal and Alan. And this special inheritance, today we agree as a church, we stand together and we say this in one voice, that this inheritance, all that has been read in this particular scripture, shall be so to you and your family and the generations to come. This is a special blessing that we bestow on you and your family. God to be with you and go ahead of you and may all your children and your children and their children, you get the idea? Never forget that there was a man in this family who knew God and by his works, all of them are saved. I have a word of, of encouragement that I've been sent to say to the incoming leaders. Pastor Andrew and Mandy, we have heard of the wonderful works that you have been doing at your church. It is a banquet. If a banquet has a meaning in the Bible, this is nothing short of it as a sign of welcoming you. May you receive it and we receive you with open hearts. Our word of encouragement to you is hidden in the works of Moses. Over and above, leading the children of Israel out of Egypt, there is something that Moses was doing. And this is, is accounted in Deuteronomy, oh, that word, um, chapter 9. He had eyes of seeing through the actions or the lack of actions of the, uh, the, the, actions of the children of Israel that would trigger God's wrath over them. And he accounts these moments over five times when he, in each of these moments, he lay prostrate before the Lord 40 days, 40 nights in the gap for God to hear an apology from him as he stand in the gap for the children of Israel, for him not to respond back in his wrath over them because we know them. They were stiff-necked like us. They praise God and they lost the way each time. So this is a significant role of great leaders. And we trust that God will give you the eyes like Moses to see um, the actions, to see through the actions that we will be doing sometimes or the lack of sometimes um, that you would stand in the gap for the church and ask God to help us. So, um, as a church, we are united with one voice requesting God to give you double the portion that Alan had. <laughs> Among other things, to give you the, those inside, the eyes to see our actions um, as needed and to guide us into his way, shepherd, shepherding us back to God's way. So may the good Lord continue to walk before you, bless you in your coming and going, uh, for his name's sake. We bless you in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Where art thou? Yesterday, Charles and I were helping put out the tables and stuff like that and decorating, and we got chased out. <laughs> we were told, go home. And why? Because I think they wanted to test a video that's about to be shown. And the person beyond, behind that video is standing next to me, as short as she really is. Yes, I am, of course. 
Okay. Hi, everybody. Yo. Wow. I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just very pleased that everybody came. Uh, so the next video you're about to see is uh, about our story, and uh, but not just our story, on Charles and Uncle Alan's story, and how they are really the pioneers in in our church and how they have changed our lives and how we want to honor you. And of course, it's about Mandy and Andrew and welcoming you, truly. Okay, turn your eyes towards the screens, thank you. So Charles and I are entering into the last leg of the race as leaders of this congregation. We don't know if it's one year or 10. But we determined to do one thing. And that is to leave. Oh, God help us in this. To leave a legacy for generations to come. So we're going to work hard. What is legacy? Is it the act of sowing seeds that you don't get to see? Or is it more than that? Well, in God's kingdom, it's about the lasting effect you have upon his children. Charles and Alan have served in this community for over 40 years. And along the way, they have definitely touched several hearts. So let's take a moment to look at some of the lives they have touched on this 40 year journey. Good evening and greetings from the Hebel World Home Group. We just want to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I've been here for so long. Never thought I'd see you stepping down after all these years. But you both deserve it. We are so thankful for all your beautiful teachings, all your beautiful guidance. I want to thank you that uh, you have established a church that has transformed and changed me and my family in such a tremendous way. I want to thank you for being there for me through all the ups and all the downs and not giving up on me. We thank God for your commitment, your dedication. Uh, being a good steward and shepherd uh, to the church. Thank you, Alan and Charles, for all your input, all your love and support over all these many, many years that you've given to so many people. Thank you for many years of dedication, patience and leadership. And thank you so much for this church. It's been a home for us. I've never seen another church that's homely, welcoming like this one. You've always made this place feel so warm, like such a warm-hearted home. I trust that this breakaway that you're doing, this change in your life, will be a great asset to you and that you'll have a lot of time together and I'll be around. So please thank me for breakfast every second week. Don't forget the person that you love. Pray that God would bless you as you rest and enjoy this time. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Love you. I pray you will enjoy every minute of it and may God bless you both with good health and happiness. And I want to say thank you. Well done, thou good and faithful servants. God bless you. Thank you. To Andrew and Mandy, welcome to the family. And with that said, we have a few things we would love to share with you. Welcome the Christie family. We, we wish you welcome here. I knew that if God puts you in this place, it's for a reason, it's for a good reason only. The, the Holy Spirit that you bring with you will, uh, will be to the benefit and growth of this church. Hoping that as a church family, we're going to grow under your leadership. So I'm very excited for the changeover and I can't wait. 
Good luck. All the all the best for for leading us um, in the in the future, and uh, we we're there to support you. And always remember, God's with you. He's got a plan for you. He's got a plan for you here, and he's he's gonna walk with you. Um, hi everybody, nothing is going to stop us from enjoying today, yeah. amen, yeah. we're going to celebrate what God is doing, Amen. just want to say a few words um, to Anshal and Pastor Allen, firstly, I didn't grow up with a mother and father in the home and I just want to thank both of you for seeing the potential in me and being a mother and father to me. And it's not just about me. Both of you have been a mother and father to so many people here today. You've impacted us in a way that you both cannot comprehend. And we'd like to say thank you. Talking about legacy, is your legacy found in this building that you've built? Mm -mm. No, it's not. Because this building could vanish in a hundred years time, God forbid, but it could. <laughs> or down a sinkhole, yes. <laughs> but your legacy will remain in each and every one of us. In us, in our children, in our children's children, and their children. For generations. And so we just want to say thank you to the both of you. Thank you. Give them a round of applause first. To Andrew and Mandy, welcome to the family. Um, I won't say you have um, Pastor Allen's shoes to fill. You have your own shoes to fill <laughs> that God has put for you. And we wish you luck on the journey. We will be there for you. Um, lastly, I'm sure you have noticed how white Pastor Allen's hair is. That is 80% my fault. <laughs> The reason I'm saying that is because um, on behalf of the youth and the young adults in this place, we are looking forward to giving you the white hair as well. Thank you. We have to do the rest of our scene from up here because... Um, That too, but that little stage is too small for the 500 people who are coming up here now. I need uh, Dave and Colleen and Costa and Lorraine and John and the staff of the church and the elders of the church and the church mouse and everything else to come up here. Now, if you don't mind standing there where Shaul is standing... So the people can see you. Shaw, you come stand here. The rest of you just hang around for a little while, wherever you want to. Uh, no, no, you come here. You go. Woman! <laughs> you heard him. Stand here. Yes. There, there. Right, this is a very exciting time right now. Um, one of the things that happened now with the power is that we lost one phase, but it's back. So we have Trinitarian electricity again. Now, my notes that I'm gonna be sharing will be on the screen so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, so let's go. Hello! Hello! It's coming. Okay, there we go. 
The role of church leaders is to pass the ministry of Jesus and the kingdom from one generation to the next. That's what we're all about today. That's what we're all about today. Oh, come on. All right. We're getting there. I'm 76. Andrew is 52. That's a 24-year difference. And so I'm passing the ministry on by half a generation. Okay, generation is normally termed 40 years, so it's okay. But I want to read a portion of scripture before proceeding with the handover. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 to 15. Paul says this, I planted the seed, Apollos watered the plants, but God made you grow. It's not the one who plants or the one who waters who is at the center of this process, but God who makes all things grow. Planting and watering are menial servant jobs at minimum wages. What makes them worth doing is the God we are serving. You happen to be God's field in which we are working. Or, to put it another way, you are God's house. Using the gift God gave me as a good architect, I designed blueprints. Apollos is putting up the walls. Let each carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. Remember, there is only one foundation, the one already laid, Jesus Christ. Take particular care in picking out your building materials. Eventually, there's going to be an inspection. If you use cheap and inferior materials, you'll be found out. The inspection will be thorough and rigorous. You won't get by with a thing. If your work passes inspection, fine. If it doesn't, your part of the building will be torn out and started over. But you won't be torn out. You'll survive, but just barely. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I, I, I think it was appropriate, you see. So uh, those are very challenging words. The apostles were the first runners in the race that started with the ascension of Christ of, to heaven and will finish when he returns in glory. They passed the ministry of the gospel to leaders like Titus and Timothy who in turn were charged with the responsibility of passing it on to others, and so the gospel has come to us this day. So to you, Andrew and Mandy, what Charles and I as the founding members of this church are doing today has certainly been confirmed through many prophetic and confirmatory words. There is no doubt in the minds of most people in attendance here today that this is God's plan and not our plan. I think we, we're in on that one. You pick up a church that we have led for 40 years, <clears throat> but I must tell you that it's not yet the church I would like it to be. It's still not a perfect church. And we believe CBCF is healthy enough to weather the challenges that comes with a senior pastoral transition. I've realized that my gifting was to bring the church to this stage. Your gifting is going to take the church into the next phase of what God has ordained for Centurion Vineyard. We trust that you're going to have a greater level of ministry success than we had. That's our trust. So both Charles and I are so pleased that because of our close relationship we can continue to serve in CVCF. Our role will now be to support you, to fulfill whatever God is leading you to do. You can see me as your personal bodyguard. (laughs) The present staff and the eldership of Centurion Vineyard are ready and able to give you the support you need as you take up your new challenging role as senior leaders of Centurion Vineyard. Now, 
Somebody jumped in on my sermon. Mm. Okay. As today is your 29th wedding anniversary, you will never forget this day. As every year into the future, you will remember what happened on your 29th anniversary. Mm. It's going to be burned in there, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I throw this thing away. All right, so now we come to the official handover. So we now officially hand over the church to you both. Having been led by the Spirit, we hereby hand over the congregation, all these beautiful people, to you for your care and your leading. Can I? <laughs> we give you this key. This key is a symbol to remind you that you are unlocking the next stage in the life of Centurion Vineyard. Okay. And before I give it to you, I want you to just see. It doesn't say CVCF. Because this key is a prophetic word to you. Amen. You are going to be unlocking stuff for Vineyard South Africa, for Africa, and who knows where else. Then too. <laughs> there, are, there are some keys that I give you now. Those are just the first level of keys that will let you in the main doors. Well, I've seen David's keys. <laughs> Once I've checked out to make sure all these keys are still relevant, I shall be handing you a bunch. <laughs> keys of the kingdom will belong to you, Bird. Okay. <laughs> well, you now have access to the property. May God bless you. When I had a restaurant, I used to just do this. There we go. And the nice thing is that soon your name will be on the response thing so that when alarms go off, you will get a call and, and it will all be your problem, not mine. So I now invite David... Dave and Colleen, Costa and Lorraine and John, and any other leaders of the vineyard who may be here, I don't know if, I mean, you know, it's serious looking people, if you'd like to come and lay hands on them. And so, Dave, will you lead us off? Let's reach out our hands towards this wonderful couple in this very special moment. Gather around them, we can lay hands on them, all, all the better. A bit heavy, yeah. <coughs> So, Father, we thank you for this couple. Thank you for Andrew. Thank you for Mandy. Thank you for the call that's on their lives. Thank you for the passion for your gospel that changes lives. Helps us to find out who we're meant to be. Helps us to connect in community. Helps to discover your plan and purpose for us and to fulfill it. So, Andrew and Mandy, we commission you as leaders of Centurion Vineyard to lead these people, to expand the kingdom to be faithful to the ministry that God has entrusted to you. May God be your courage, your comfort, and your consoler. We bless you in the name of Jesus, and we call for the Holy Spirit to confirm in every way he chooses his anointing on you for this commissioning and this appointment as senior pastors of this church. May God bless you. Amen.
And I said to you the other day, Andrew, and I say it again now, in the name of Jesus, Would you pause me there? that the calling to this church is a calling to the next season of the gift that God gave you at first. And we want to just bless that and stir it up again and say over you, be strong. And this is also for you, Mandy. In fact, when I say it, I want you to hear it as the Lord saying over you, I'm going to make you strong. You will be strong enough for this. You will be strong physically. We speak God's health and strength over your bodies, over your legs over your feet, over every aspect of your health. And we say, in the name of Jesus, be strong. Be strong emotionally. Be strong spiritually. Be strong for the challenges that are ahead. And, and here's the promise of God. He will never give you anything that he doesn't strengthen you to bear. In the name of Jesus, we bless that. And we say over you, Andrew, uh, let the gift that was in you from the beginning, the gift of evangelism, let it be strong. Let the flame burn brighter than ever before. God is giving you a heritage among nations. He's giving you a heritage among lost people. Uh, so it's not just to maintain this wonderful church, but it is to make this church double and treble and quadruple in number. By the, by the bringing in of lost people into a kingdom of light. In the name of Jesus, we bless you with the gifts of God. And we say, and more gifts, gifts that you haven't even seen yet that will be released to you, but they will be released to follow the preaching of the gospel. Signs following the preaching of the gospel. We bless you in Jesus' name. Andrew, my prayer for you is that you never lose your heart for the people. And that you and Mandy will always smell like the sheep. Yeah. My prayer for you is that you will continue to build relationally and that you will find yourself becoming a father to many who are in ministry. I pray over you the favor of God, the blessing of God that brings no sorrow. And I pray over you an anointing for the future so that you may fulfill the purposes of God in your generation. And I'm asking that you will continue to reach out to those in need, not just in the church, that this church will benefit from your heart for people, but that you will also continue to reach out to those who are outside of this family. My prayer over you is that you will increase in stature, you will grow in grace and that your heart will increase in size so that the heart of God may be expressed through your ministry. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Andrew, I ask a Moses mantle on you that you'd have a Jethro in your life who would help you with the administration of this body that you have an Aaron and her that will lift up your arms when the fight is being fought, that you'll have a Joshua that will fight the fight for you, that you'll have a Joshua that you can train for the next leadership position, that you'd have a Caleb who would come back with a positive report when everything is negative in the sight of the world. And that you would take this body into the promised land that you see, but that you will take it through and into the promised land. Anyone else? Yes, Lord. This is your moment not us but yours and father set them on fire for the work of the kingdom that you have called them to do 
We just surrender at your throne. Do what the enemy cannot do. And as they lead the church, let the hearts surrender to their leadership. Because it's not all about them. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about the hearts in this church. Pour your spirit, Lord, until there's no room for anything but your presence. And walk with Mandy and Andrew as they lead the church to the next level. Your elevation is going to happen in the church. And we thank you that your move is already started. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I wonder if we could ask if the family, with the sons, daughters, daughters-in-law, core family, would you guys come and just stand with me? We'd like to just bless you as a family as well. So good because church is family. We don't want to see the family of God, the church, do well without our natural families also. Just come and stand with your folks here. Cool. Yes, Father, we thank you that you lead us as a family always. For you, family is the most precious thing. And so we pray for Mandy and Andrew as we pray for their children. We pray, Lord Jesus, that they would be richly blessed as a family. We pray that you would protect them. We pray that they would make the necessary adjustments that are coming with distance and all of those things. And we, sp- we just say, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you love this family. And we pray the very best for them. Amen. I can go down there. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's going to share a few words, seven <laughs> words with us. <laughs> okay, so um, someone reminded me. Uh, when we got here at this table, that it's our 29th wedding anniversary. And this table, yeah, wouldn't exist if what happened 29 years ago didn't happen. So um, thank you, Lord, for that. Um, yeah, so Alan said I've got about half an hour, hey? <laughs> 30 seconds. Okay, first uh, to say thank you to our Father in heaven. Um, All glory to Him. It's not about me. It's not about man's. It's not about any of us. It's about Him, and it's all unto His glory. It's about putting Jesus on display. It's about making Jesus famous. It's got nothing to do with any of us. I just happen to function a certain way, and I I wanted to just acknowledge that first. Secondly, to to my man's um, 29 years of marriage. We met in 88, got married in 94, and she's still reasonably fond of me. Um, so, yeah, just thank you, my love, um, yeah, for putting up with me. To my, my precious children um, and their the, the spouses and things and boyfriend, I don't know, whatever. And, and, and you know how it works, in, you, you'll, you'll get to know me. I'm, uh, like, I'm, I'm, like Costa said, I, I come from a Greek background, so... So Amy, who married Daniel earlier this year, is not my daughter-in-law. Once you get married, the in-law falls away. She's my daughter. Um, so just to say, yeah, I love you guys, and thank you for walking with us through all these years of ministry. Ministry can, it can take a toll on a family, but they still look all right, eh? Yeah. yeah. So fortunately, they get their looks from their mother. Um, thank you to our friends and our family who are here this morning. Um, coming to celebrate with us, and to the Centurion family. Um, it's, it's been a privilege to share here last year a couple of times, and then this year, and it's, it kind of f- already feels like home. So, <laughs> I got the key, so. <laughs> um, but 
yeah, uh, where's Dave, Colleen, thank you for coming, John, uh, Costa, Lorraine, uh, it really means so much to us. Uh, Shaul, Ellen, man, I love you guys. I'm so grateful that you're here with us. And um, I, I and Mandy and I will do our best to look after your precious baby. Um, we love you guys and look forward to the journey. Um, yeah, so, yeah, and to the Centurion family, you know, thank you for your trust and giving me the trust, your trust to lead, because I know that's, uh, that's something, and many of you don't know me, but uh, you'll get to know me a little bit. I have, a, I have one or two WhatsApps from pastors from around the country to Alan and Shaul and us and the church and so on. So this is from Ricky and Yvette Cupido from Joy Vineyard. Um, in the Cape, Christian greetings, congratulations on the induction of your new pastoral couple and family. You were led and well fed by Alan and Shaul for many years. Now you're venturing into a new and exciting season with Andrew and Mandy. Continue to support them and love them uh, with the same love and support you gave Alan and Shaul. Andrew, God is not unjust. He will not forget your labor and love you and the love you have shown as you helped his people and continue to love them. Keep on loving the people into the kingdom. Lots of love and best wishes, Ricky and Yvette. Um, this is from Johan Fullard from uh, the Lofelt Vineyard. Dear Ellen and Shaul, we honor you as Lofelt Vineyard for your long and faithful servant into go um, unto God and for his glory. We pray that this coming season will be filled with joy, much love and peace. We love and respect you both, Johan and Louise and the Lofelt Vineyard family. And the last one is from Gavin and Karen Marie from Fountain Vineyard in PE. Kaipecha, uh, sorry. Did I get it right, Dave? Kaipecha. Man, man, it's getting good, eh? I think that deserves a round of applause, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was sweating when I thought I had to say that. So, <laughs> congratulations, Alan and Charles, on your retirement and faithfulness in serving and building Centurion. We celebrate with you as you hand the baton over to Andrew and Mandy. To Andrew and Mandy, all the best in this new season. God has gone before you and will give you what you need as you go. Keep allowing Him to lead and guide you. To our Centurion family, we wish we could join you on this special day, but instead we've sent some of our best to represent your PE family. May the Lord bless you as you journey together in this new chapter. Much love, Gavin and Karen Marie. So, um, yeah, so when the band starts playing, it means I must round up. I get it. <laughs> but I have the mic. Okay. Um, friends and family here your responsibility here goes way beyond eating the free food some of you look surprised it does you've been witness to something special there's been there is a mutual responsibility and accountability to the Lord and to one another at what you've witnessed here today you're not here by mistake I've not taken Authority, however, I'm grateful that you have given me the authority to lead. And as a, Jesus, as a follower of Jesus and a, as a servant leader, I will seek to do my best for this family, for the Lord Jesus, for my family and the church. I cannot promise you, and I'm saying that up front, um, and Alan knows this, I cannot promise you that I will not offend you or upset you at some stage. Please extend grace to me. But you've had Alan as a pastor for a long time, so... <laughs> Um, but know that it's not my heart's intent and I'll always endeavor not to hurt anyone or cause upset let's commit to staying together at the table and working it out let's not walk away from the table let's commit to loving him and loving our neighbors to seeking his kingdom his righteousness first and as his kingdom come as his kingdom comes I know we will see demons scatter we will see cancer flee. We will see blind eyes open, deaf ears open. We will see the lame walk. We will see the lost come home, the unchurched come to know Jesus as we walk this road together. And, and a very dear friend of mine sent me this quote this morning, and it's such a great reminder. And Paul Johnson said it a long time ago, and I, and I feel exactly the same way it resonates. And he says this, and I'm saying it to you as well. My goal has never been to grow a big church. I want to grow big people. And that's the deal, you know. So I want to ask you, if you're here this morning, if you would commit to the next three Sundays to being with me. Yeah? Just three Sundays. Give me three Sundays to see if I'm not such a bad oak. Okay? 
So next Sunday, I want, I want you to know who I am. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my own journey and testimony and stuff like that so you can know me before you know what I know. Yeah? Okay? The Sunday after that, I want to share about who we are as a vineyard, how we understand this family so that you know that, I'm, that I understand who we are as a vineyard. And then the third Sunday, I want to share about where we're going as a family and what I believe God is saying to us. So, so just commit to the next three Sundays. That's all I'm asking for. And, and you know, Ron started off by saying this is the last offering. Um, it's not. Um, I just want to put that out there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, could I, could I just say, man, I am so privileged to be here. Mans and I, we, we are, the Lord help us walk this road and be faithful. That the next 40 years would look even better than these 40 because I'm, I'm, I'm 53, just turned 53, and I'm, my plan is to live to 95. So, so, so 40 years, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so join me for the next three Sundays, please, and enjoy the fellowship and the time together. Can, I'm just going to take a moment to bless the food, yeah? So Holy Spirit, would you be with us? Would our fellowship be sweet would there be a sense of unity and peace among us? God, would you bless the food to us? Thank you for those who have catered and worked tirelessly for this food. Bless the hands that prepared this food. Lord, bless it to us um, and nourish us in it and let our fellowship over the food be blessed by your presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know these small people are pushy, eh? I just wanted to share with you that um, sure, okay. That what we're going to do now, I don't know what it is now, just now. We're going to um, have closing song, and then a thank yous for people who have done stuff and then there's going to be two people who are going to explain the whole food stuff and you got something okay that's fine <laughs> you can do that I just want you to know that for the first time in about 50 something years I am going to phone into the church office tomorrow <laughs> with a message to Andrew the senior pastor I'm very sorry. I won't be at the meeting this morning. I'm not feeling well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's how we party. Morning, church. My waiters, where are you at? This is the bit where some people think the program is over, but it's not. We have a little bit <laughs> that is not on your program. So waiters, please get ready. We are going to have one song, and then we're going to have a bit of a surprise. But I wanted to share this with you, Church. Uh, it's from Psalm uh, 47, uh, verse 1 and 2. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. And this morning and the weeks, that we're leading to this, we've seen his awesomeness. So be joyful. We're going to do something special shortly, but I'm going to leave it a bit. We worship and then I'll be back. Yes.
Some of you who've been with us through the journey of planning this know how sometimes it got stressful. And I just want to share this one bit uh, with all of you. We all know the story of the five loaves and the two fish and how they were multiplied, right? That's like in the Bible time and sometimes it's like, yeah, miracles were then. I want to give you something very close to home and that's the multiplication of these pens. <laughs> Yesterday... <laughs> Yesterday, Anshal gave us a box of pens. She's been counting these pens. Those are your little thank you uh, uh, gifts, by the way. You may take them home. They're on each table. She's been counting and saying the numbers are going up. We don't have enough. And yesterday, as we put in, we said, okay, ladies, we put in one, miss one. One, miss one. Each family will get a, at least a pen. And then Angie is like, we still have enough. We're done with the tables. Can we put more? Then she puts on every chair. On, on every chair. We still have pens <laughs> left over. <laughs> Anshal. And if any of you know Anshal very well, counting is a hobby. She did not get the number wrong. So God miraculously multiplies this. Tell me if you don't have a pen by your table. Everybody got, and we still had left over. We serve an amazing God. Okay, time for the sermon. Oh, gosh. Are you all hungry? Just bear with me, please. Oh, it shouldn't be long. But you see, they forgot about the charos. So, we, you know the diversity of this church? We are a lovely mix. But you need the charo here. Greetings and blessings to you all of you all, as well as the vineyard leadership. Uh, what a wonderful sight to see this church so blessed and so beautiful, and you guys look so awesome. Um, yeah, we chased you home yesterday <laughs> because we had our own hidden agenda program. <laughs> hey, be careful. You can't trust all these guys. You must watch. You must know what's happening behind the scenes as well. But we'll let Mandy in now and again. <laughs> um, so as we know, Pastor, uh, we know how orchestrated you are and meticulous and programmed you are with doing things. So that's why we asked you yesterday to please leave because we had a hidden plan. Uh, and yes, uh, David and, and Sean knew a little bit about it. You know, um, <laughs> she personally came to see me while I was busy with the sound to say, you're going to do a toast. <laughs> so that's what this is all about, you know. Uh, and I'm only honored to do that. However, I want to take this opportunity to say a few words. While you have the mic, like my incoming pastor says, own it. <coughs> Um, I can't say let's give thanks for the life of a man. You know, you normally do that. He's not dead. <laughs> the guy's got a lot of life in him. <laughs> so I can't say, you know, let's give thanks for the life of Pastor Allen for all those years and whatever. Because he's not going. He's still going to be here. He's going to take a role up in another ministry or another leadership. I don't know whether you're going to get that call because he might just rock up for the meeting. <laughs> Because that's how he is, you know. So, <laughs> however, how does one compress 55 years of ministry in five minutes? I can't do justice to that, and I wouldn't do justice. I want to take this opportunity on a personal note to say thank you for standing by me and my family for the 25 years that we have been part of this church. You've been my friend my mentor, my dad. You knew what to say and was the only one who could set me straight. I, I couldn't have asked for a better person than you to be by my side. Thank you for empowering me, for showing me the right way to be and believing in me 
my darkest moments, my ups and downs. You've been there through it all. And you've never once judged me. All you ever did was just spoke positivity into my life. And you've taken me from, s from levels to levels to levels. Today I'm standing here talking. I never ever thought I'll stand up in the pulpit. Maybe one day I'll start preaching here, you know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll work out. We'll negotiate the price. But Alan, you know what? Thank you so much. I, I cannot ever repay you. There's no monetary value that I can put to the relationship that we share. I'll always be there for you. I'll always support you. You'll always have this Indian lighty in your life. I'll always be your son forever and ever. Love you so much, Alan. I'm not done. <coughs> Yeah, you're popping already, guys. Y'all are hungry. I can stand in agreement with this church to say, thank you, Pastor Allen, for the sacrifice you have made for this community and the ministry. You and Auntie Shal have shepherded us and this church with the greatest of love, caring, wisdom, and most of all, with passion. We all know who the real boss is. It's somewhere down here. <laughs> We all know they come packaged in small, small packages, but they are, they are dynamites. We also want to acknowledge you, Auntie Shal, for your love and obedience to God for all your years in the ministry. Thank you. We, guys, I'm saying, I'm em emphasizing this. We as a church will continue praying for you because how do you put up with him? <laughs> Pastor, this is such a memorable day for us. Centurion Vineyard turning 40, which would have not been possible without the 55 years you have given. I can't toast to you, however. Everybody, please raise your glasses. <clears throat> and a very big toast to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For blessing us with a mighty servant such as Pastor Allen for the years in the ministry and for the many more years to come. Blessings to you all. Yeah. Cheers. One, two. Hello, everybody. It's not on. It's not on. Hello. Yeah, we shop. So, we took over now. Closer to your mouth. Can I please ask Alan and Charles to join me this side? And Mandy and Andy to join me this side. Closer to your mouth. Okay. I can load it for you. No, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> Don't look in the box. <laughs> what is <are you> so? <laughs> is that the keys? Okay, so I'm going to say a few words first. Right. So we start this side and then we move that side. Right. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in the Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of God. They still bear fruit in old age, but they're never full of sap and green. Thank you both for your faithful service time and time again for visits of compassion whenever the need arises. Thank you both for timeless dedication, the difference you make 
and all the love you've shown that can never be repaid. Thank you most of all for listening to the Father's heart and for being the leaders that point out to the Lord, point us to the directions of the Lord. With sincere appreciation and for your dedication to Centurion Vineyard, thank you. Andrew and Mandy, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. It's Matthew 10, 40. We would like to welcome you to Centurion Vineyard. We are anxious to get to know you and your family. We hope that the friends and church families you make here will be treasured at those you left behind. We're glad you've chosen to come to us. Jeremiah 3.15, and I will give you shepherds after my own heart who, you will feed, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And I will give you the shepherds after your own heart who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. You must remember, I'm a man under authority, and now I have, I have to do what I'm told to do. <laughs> nah? All right, I'm, I'm just going to quickly go through the thank yous. It's uh, quite short, and then I will let the ladies tell you what you're going to get for food. Oh, I've been told to tell you where the toilets are. <laughs> Right. Okay, for for the for wheelchair, there any here? Out the door, down around the corner there. Wheelchair and ladies. Out to that door down there, men's. In the lobby, when you go out the lobby, turn right, men on that side, women on this side, you can't get lost. Okay? So now you know where the toilets are. Are you happy? If all those toilets are full, you hop up the stairs into the hall and there's toilets there as well. And guys, there are trees all around. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, all right. Right, here we go. Right, I want to say thank you to the team of ladies who organized this event. Really. And I was told I am not allowed to mention anybody by name, so I will not mention Rose and Ceci. <laughs> I want to say thank you to all of you who are here today. You've made this day a memorial for us. Great day. By the donations of the bottled water, the cakes, donating meat and funds for meat and printing of programs and photography and flowers and volunteering your labor, setting up the venue, baking and serving. And of course, thank you to those who are going to tidy up afterwards. <laughs> uh, 
And then thank you to the music group for doing all the rewiring and changing of the sound system so that things work today. Uh, we, the leadership team, have been astounded and grateful to all of you who contributed financially, no matter what amount, in order to make this day a success. Thank you. We had three special collections. That's what they were talking about today. People will still give. <laughs> but these were three special collections on three Sundays, different Sundays, for raising up funds for this day today. And so the last one took place this morning as you experienced. Thank you for your wonderful generosity. And then thank you to the caterers who have promised me that there should be no sickness after eating their food today. I had to ask them that question. <laughs> and also thank you to Clover South Africa for their donation of Ultramel, which um, you will have for pudding. Okay, Rose and Ceci, you can now take over. A rose. We're still going to do one more song. Yeah, but I'm sure I won't run away. Yeah, okay, won't run away. After she's finishing, finished explaining the food, the music group is going to do one more song. And then the service will be over. I don't know. Good morning, church. Hi, Rose. You all look so beautiful. Give yourselves a round of applause. Uh, there can never be a party without singing happy birthday. I'm sorry, guys. We have a beautiful corner, a cake there at the corner. And it's an anniversary celebration and a birthday celebration. So we'll ask our two pastors to go at that corner as we sing happy birthday to cut that cake a bit. Let's go, my elders. There, that corner at 40. There's a cake, both pastors. Happy birthday and anniversary. You representing the 40th is representing the anniversary. Let's go together. Bongi, you know I can speak, but I can't sing, so I need a happy birthday song. Uh, let's see. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vineyard. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Let's sing it again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Happy birthday to you. One more time. Come on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vineyard. Happy birthday to you. Yip, yip. Yip, yip. Yay, happy 40th birthday. What a milestone God has seen us through us. Amen. You better take that slice and we take it to the office. We can't guarantee you that there'll be cake. Don't rush. Huh? We'll eat. Let's worship God first. And thank him for such an amazing day. Um, <clears throat> trying to sing, but hey, that drink was strong. My, I think mine turned to wine. <laughs> Can't see the chords there. But I think I don't think my voice is suited to this song. Yeah, I no. think there's there's, there's someone else that has yeah. a more mature voice to, to handle yes. the song I'm about to sing. So yeah. Pastor Allen, won't you come and lead us in the ancient yeah. of days?
Oh, blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Blessing and honor, come on. Blessing and honor, glory and power. Unto the ancient of days, from every nation, all creation, bow before the ancient of days. Bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne in worship. You. Exalted, O oh God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O oh, ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing unto the ancient of days, for none can compare to your matchless word. Sing unto the ancient of days. Your kingdom, your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing unto the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless word. Sing unto the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every knee shall bow at your throne in worship you be exalted O god and your kingdom shall not pass away O ancient of days blessing and honor come on blessing and honor glory and power be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O God. shall not pass away, O oh, ancient of days. Your kingdom, your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing unto the ancient of days, for none can compare to your matchless worth. Sing unto the ancient of days. Your kingdom. your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing unto the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless word. Sing unto the ancient of days. Hallelujah. Glory. Okay, now it's full time, ne? Thank you, everybody. You know the rules. Enjoy the food and enjoy the company. Thank you.